Guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm David. Today's video is long overdue, and it's going to be about making these gardens for the raised section of West Canal sidings. Uh, if you're not into scenery videos, stay tuned for the next video, which will be all about the electronics. I've actually got a load of Merg modules built up and wired in, and uh, the DCC automation is starting to come along nicely. But that'll be in a future video. Today's going to focus on the first four gardens um, for the raised area, as well as the uh, road section and 3D printing some sheds. It's a slightly different video to normal, as I realised I didn't actually film very much footage at all. So we start off with a, a normal sort of style, where I show you the design and 3D printing of these garden sheds, and then we'll move on to a sort of photo slideshow of everything else that I got done. Okay, then I've got half of West Canal sidings out on the bed. And this is the half we're really interested in. In fact, we're only really interested in this top section here. Um, so the first stage really was to sort of plan out what I want to do here. Um, and I've decided what's going to go in every garden. Then finally we get over to the end of this road here. Obviously this needs to be blended into the back scene first. Um, but it is just going to be sort of dead end road where people have abandoned vehicles. So we've got Okay then, so currently the gardens just have fences in. These were 3D printed and painted up by myself, um, designed in Fusion 360. And there is a link in the top right corner of the screen now to the video that showed the vague process of how those were made. The section is removable, um, so if I grab the house you can see it lifts up on this side of the main fences. So I've got to bear that in mind when I do all the scenery, but fortunately the gap isn't too noticeable. So I'm thinking if there's some bushes at the ends of the gardens, that will act as a sort of baffle between the ground and the fence. We should be all fine. You'll have to excuse this video being mostly handheld, but I don't currently have a tripod with me at uni, um, so I'm going to have to buy one in the next coming weeks, uh, as and when I've got enough money for one. The first stage, then, of doing these gardens has been the sheds. So, I designed them on Fusion 360, as per normal, so I just started with basic shed measurements uh, from the internet, scaled down to 4mm scale. If you don't know how to do that, um, how to scale things like that, just imagine that one foot in full size is 4mm in double O gauge. And that's pretty, pretty accurate, it's close enough, um, and it's the standard that most people use. So here we've got a nice little shed that was going to go into one of the gardens. However, I found it does look a little small, particularly when you compare it to a um, just a man standing next to it. So what I did is I took this on the computer, scaled it up by 1.5% or something, and we came out with this, which is a much better size. Sort of looks like your standard 4x8 shed or something. Uh, I've gone for planked timbers, and there's one window there. Okay, so that's the first shed, and we can ignore this one that's slightly too small. Then over here we've got a sort of more potting style shed. Again I've scaled this up the same as the other one before printing. This time I've gone for a sloped roof in one direction uh, and the roof is here. I have basically finished painting the first shed, the slightly larger one. So obviously it's black 3D print so that gives me a black undercoat. Um, if you're starting from a different colour I would recommend spraying it black first. I've then been dry brushing so what I've done is I've used a mix of raw umber and burnt umber to dry brush the first stage. And then I've gone and painted the roof. Now for the roof what I did is I used Van Dyke Brown, white and just a few drops of ultramarine blue to give it a slightly blue hue. And that is the roof colour I came out with. And then what I ended up doing is mixing it all together on my plate so that would be all of the colours that I've used so far and then just dry brushing that on top of the planks to give them some lighter weathering. Okay, so that's pretty much where I stopped recording. There was actually quite a bit more footage of bits and bobs, but none of it was very coherent, um, and the video would be really long and wouldn't really get to the point. Um, in general, though, I kind of got carried away and did a load of work without filming anything, just because I was enjoying what I was doing. Um, but I did take plenty of photos, uh, a mixture for R and Web, and also so I knew I'd have photos of each stage to show you guys on video. So this is the garden shed, fully painted and weathered and just rested where it needs to go. You can see the other shed over here just received a slightly lighter brown um, and then a nice grey on the roof. 
Now you can see the gardens are now full of soil. So the way I added soil to the gardens is uh, basically just got some soil from the garden. Um, you can see over here, much to my housemate's confusion, I uh, took some soil from the garden, baked it in the oven. This both dries it and also gets rid of any sort of bacteria and germs that are in it. Um, sieved it into a much finer mix um, and then I could just put it on some wood glue across all of the gardens. You can see I've also added the soil on the road here. This just adds texture underneath where the tarmac's going to go. So if we move on to here, you can see I've started to paint up the road just using a bit of Tamiya grey paint. Um, and you can see down here actually the fur sort of inklings of hard standing areas in each garden. Now I eventually decided I want hard standing in most of these gardens. It would make sense to have a bit of concrete behind the back doors, which can be seen here. So we've got some plastic card in each of these, which I later removed because I've decided the 3D prints work much better. And here is an example of a 3D printed section um, that was drawn up in Fusion 360 on my computer. And uh, we'll get onto it in more detail in just a second, uh, because coming up here, we've got Vallejo thick mud. So effectively, I, I bought this on holiday over Christmas. My dad was looking at some Airfix kits in a model shop. And whilst in there with him, I saw this and thought I might as well give it a go. So I've put it around the edges of this road um, just to sort of add texture. It's a bit sandy, so I might turn it down at some point. But this is just going to sort of receive static grass and a bit more painting uh, now I've got the texture done. And that will blend in the road. I think this is as far as I went with the road at the moment. So it does just look like this still. But it will be getting work in the next video. Okay, back to this 3D printed part. So this was designed in Fusion 360 on my computer and printed out. And it's got these big sort of, I think they're two foot squared um, paving slabs, like block slabs, a nice bit of what is effectively curb stones uh, along the edge here and a little plinth in the doorway. You can also see a little drain installed back here, which I'm quite happy with. So this was painted up using Tamiya acrylics again. Um, you can see I've also, I've gotten rid of these sort of lumpy bits where the 3D printer didn't quite print perfectly. I do need to tune my printer actually. But yeah, I cut those off and sanded it a little bit. Went through the cracks with a scalpel to deepen them. Um, and I also cut through a couple slabs as if they've been smashed or broken. At the back there, the small drain has received um, some dark brown paint just to show a little rusty drain cover. So this was glued in with wood glue and it fits perfectly into the doorway. Uh, and just under the edge of the house here. Now one of the main reasons for this raised bit uh, of slabbing is because this kitchen has an LED in it and there was light leaking under these walls. So the uh, the slab sort of helps cover those up. Okay, so once that was glued in, put in a little bit of foliage. You can see there's some green foliage in the cracks as well. Uh, and a little bit back here filling that seam as well. This is just wooden scenic, it's fine, um, fine turf, I believe. And then you can see some watered down PVA glue, ready for two millimeter static grass. This is uh, War World Scenic static grass. I can't remember what color though. Okay, so whilst this was drying in the background, I decided to have a crack at this overgrown garden at the end. So I decided to do the far garden at the back of the layout as an overgrown sort of tip. Um, so we've got some bare earth showing here by the, by the doorway where they sort of just just been walking outside in this bit perhaps uh, and then we've got a load of four mil static grass quite thin though then put hairspray on this and added more four millimeter static grass including a lot of dead and autumn grasses some more fine leaf um sorry some fine turf sprinkled on top to make little uh, flowers and bushes and then we've got some fine leaf foliage uh, or sea foam just glued in here to make a big bush it's actually going in towards that window and perhaps has broken it. Okay, so the next garden on. Um, the other two had been dried at this point. I think it's a few days later. I started to work on the next one. For this one, I wanted to add flower beds with some of the flowers that I bought over Christmas. So I left lots of space around the outside of the lawn. There's also a pathway coming here to the shed. Uh, and some bushes over here, just with some coarse turf. Didn't actually know I'd bought this coarse turf. I found it in my toolbox and thought, might as well use it to make a bush. Okay, so there's some two millimeters static grass on here, and you can see the gaps left for the flower beds. 
Whilst that glue was drying, again, put some 2mm static grass into the next garden. Okay, so these flowers and shrubs are actually from Tasma products. And they've been popping up on layouts all over YouTube uh, quite recently, over the past couple of years. I actually found them in the model shop in Lowestoft when I was on holiday. Um, but I'm incredibly impressed with them. Um, so this is a sort of rose bush looking thing. Uh, and we've got these smaller flowers here. And they're very strong actually. So these are metal stems. Um, and all of this is sort of solidly glued. So they're very, very well made. And you can hand, handle them really easily. You can see here some coarse turf making another little shrub. And to plant these flowers, you literally just make a small hole. Um, I used a sort of a braddle or something. Made a little hole and put these in with wood glue and they're held really strong. Okay, so this lady here is a Backman branch line figure. I believe she's a 1950s and 60s passenger figure actually. I'm not sure what she's carrying in her hand, but she's walking down the garden to look in the shed. Um, you can see just behind her poking out, we've got a pink one of these sort of bushes. We've got a lovely overview shot here. See all the flowers in this garden and the pathway. And over here, the next door garden has received, so we've got the static grass from before with some sort of fine turf sprinkled on to make um, clovers and that sort of thing. Lots of uh, clump foliage or coarse turf, whichever it is, um, making shrubs around the bottom of the house and the fence. Another Tasma Products bush, uh, another pink one there actually. And then we've got some blue and pink um, Model Railway Scenics flowers, much smaller ones. So this garden, I'm thinking of adding some sort of stepping stones and maybe a bench. I'm not too sure, uh, but I'm really happy with how it's gone so far. Okay, so I've uh, I've got these figures from Prizer, these these uh, cats and dogs, and I thought it'd be nice to have, we've got a black and white cat here on top of the shed. And that might be why this uh, woman has come out of her house trying to get the cat to come back inside. Next door to the cat then, I've added this uh, hose pipe into the drain. Uh, now, any guesses what it is? It's a piece of solder. Um, so I got some 0.8 millimeter solder. This is the stuff that I just use for all my electronics, really. Um, painted it dark green with some Tamiya acrylic, but made sure to leave just a little bit at the end, silver still, to look like the tap. Bent over the end and super glued it to the side of the house and just sort of fletched the other little bit down into this drain here. Just for size, there's the end of my finger. You can see how small this hose pipe actually is. Um, yeah, it's less than a millimetre thick and it's very, very effective. effective. Okay, why not? There's an Alsatian uh, parking at the, uh, the cat next door. What I like about this photo is you can see the different types of wood we've got going on as well. So we've got this nice bleached weathered uh, fence and perhaps a slightly newer or more looked after shed here. Can see some imperfections in the 3D prints, but I can assure you those are very small and don't look so bad to the naked eye. Okay, so here's an overview um, of the end of the gardens. You can see the last two gardens are just left with soil, and these will be covered in the next gardens video, which I'm no, I've no clue when that will be out, but it'll be whenever I get them done. A few questions though for you guys. Um, I'm thinking of putting a patio area all in this garden, sort of hard standing. Would that be prototypical for the 60s? Uh, if not, would, would there be gravel on the ground or something like that? I basically want to break up uh, the look of things as all of the rest of the gardens have got short grass and it might be quite nice to have some uh, paving slabs or something in here under the slightly larger shed. The garden at the end is going to receive some paving up here, perhaps some brick paving just to make that different as well, and then a normal lawn. However, it is going to have painters and decorators in because up in the upstairs window there is already a painter and decorator um, looking at the wall or turning off the light or something in that bedroom. So I thought it'd be nice to have uh, some ladders, some cloths drying on the lawn, a few buckets of paint or whatever scattered about the lawn. And over here in the road section, I'm thinking of parking a painter and decorator's van just next to the house, uh, which would be a nice detail. The alleyway, I'm thinking of also adding some bins, some dust bins, um, and perhaps a street lamp. Um, I'm thinking a sort of 50s, 60s concrete street lamp with a single LED might light up this little scene quite nicely. Again, and just looking back the other direction, 
this is the shot we saw in the introduction to this video um, so you can see nice sort of overgrown but floral garden here very well kept lawn footpath and flower beds here with obviously the shed and the cat next door then we've got the lawn the paving the hose pipe and the dog Thinking of adding a bike or something, lent up against this wall just to finish off that garden. Then finally at the end, the really overgrown, messy garden with all the shrubs. Another bush is needed here to fill in this little gap by the fence and some stuff along the bottom of the fence, uh, which is actually part of the main layout, not the removable section. Okay, so I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Slightly different style. Let me know if you like it. I might do some more like this in the future it was actually much easier um, to get work done just taking photos and not stopping to film. Slightly harder to edit, um, as in it, it took me a while to work out what on earth I was going to do, um, because all I had was photographs, but I think it will turn out well in the end, and I hope you guys agree.